regularly scheduled Shelburne Select Board meeting of August 14th, 2018, which I now call to order. The first item is to approve the agenda. Is there a motion to that effect? Moved by Josh. Second. Seconded by Jamie. Is there any discussion? Any discussion in the public? Hearing none, seeing no hands. Will those who are approving the agenda please signify by saying aye? Aye. aye. And those aye. opposed, nay, the ayes have it. Mary is on the phone tonight. She just voted aye. Colleen is not yet able to attend the meeting and we'll, we will see her when she's able to do so. The next item is to approve select board minutes of the July 24th meeting. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Moved by Jamie. Second. Seconded by Josh. Any discussion? I have a couple minor cleanup comments that I can just share with Lee, but just to step you through them on page one, item four, first bullet, it's Pascarella with an A. Mm. Um, page three, item eight, just capitalizing service there. Um, I thought on the head shop ordinance, we should just be a little clearer on, on the report out from Lee. I just thought we'd add reported VLCT's legal advice is not to regulate head shops because, <clears throat> excuse me, this would be uh, challenging to enforce. Seemed like a better yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's a good characterization of their guidance. Would you agree? Sure. Okay. We don't necessarily have to put these corrections in an amendment form, no, if that's okay. No, I think I can just. Is there any discussion in the public? Hearing none, seeing no hands. Those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Mary, did you? Yes, I voted. Um, and for purposes of going forward, I'll wait a second so that you can then hear me vote. Okay? Thank, thank you, Mary. Thank you. <coughs> Next item is public comments. Are there any? Hearing none, seeing no hands, we'll move to the following item, which is select board comments. Uh, I will introduce those by the following. We're honored tonight at the presence of three of our most esteemed members of our public safety community. Uh, Linda Goodrich, Jacob Leopold, and Lieutenant Alan Fortin, all of whom we will commemorate in just a few minutes uh, by, uh, by uh, Lee, uh, uh, Lee's presentation, but to make a few introductory comments of my own. Uh, Linda is, of course, by most accounts, if not all accounts, the heart and soul of Shelburne's first family of public service. Her service in chief of the rescue squad has been memorable and, and establishes a, a standard that Jacob will be, I'm sure, in his own way, pressed to, to uh, uh, achieve, but given his considerable uh, technical abilities and his uh, powerful dedication to the Shelburne community, there's certainly no doubt that his will be a successful tenure. Uh, Lieutenant Fortin just finished in the last several days 27 and a half years of law enforcement service to the town of Shelburne. In itself, that's a conspicuous accomplishment. Uh, I think what could be said of Al is that he leaves a legacy of, of reputation and in all of our cases, in all of our lives, that's probably the one thing you most wish will happen, is that in your passing, you have left a reputation of, of the kind that Alan has, of professional competence, of caring for the community, and of extraordinary dedication to its well-being. Uh, with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Lee Crone, who will continue with uh, our thanks. Thank you. Well, 
We have representatives of police, volunteer fire, and rescue. Thank you all for coming this evening. I'd like to introduce Jacob Leopold, standing tall in the back, compared to me, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, new rescue chief, thank you for taking on that. And again, as Jerry said, you've got quite a legacy to follow. We would like to offer special recognition this evening, first to Linda Goodrich, who, as I understand it, has spent 19 years so far and continuing on Shelburne Rescue Squad, 12 years as its chief, and we'd like to present you with this certificate of achievement, recognizing that we, and we know you're going to continue when you're back on your feet. But, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, nice. read on there. Thank you. <laughs> and Lieutenant Fortin, 29 and a half, almost 30 years of service, rising up through the ranks in many different arenas. We've heard a lot of wonderful things about your service and really appreciate that. And we'd like to present you with this certificate of achievement. Got one of your rigs on there for you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. We wish you all the best. Um, noting that that the public service of these individuals and uh, suggesting that everyone in the town can uh, follow that lead by uh, by two ways. One, if you haven't already filled out the survey for the uh, town manager search, that's still available. And two, um, as we'll talk about in item nine. Uh, the comprehensive plan is under uh, uh, review, um, and uh, I think everyone would appreciate as much uh, as many people in the town um, looking at the draft and uh, providing their uh, comments um, as it goes forward. So, uh, thank you, Mary. I'm going to demure this evening for obvious reasons. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Uh, agree. I mean, for, for a combined almost 50 years of service, thank you just doesn't feel like enough to me. The community is privileged to have been the beneficiary of your collective service, and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for all of your colleagues and who came and to bear witness. We... It's a mark of the great respect in which the three of you are held, and we are uh, really blessed at, uh, at, at having your help. Thanks very much. The next item is town manager report. It has been quite a time these past few weeks, as you might imagine. Uh, Recapping one piece of old business, as I think most of you know by now, we did consummate the agreement with the city of South Burlington for the reserve water allocation capacity serving the Spear Street area, which will allow certain developments otherwise that may be permissible to proceed. That was a several year process that we were able to bring to closure at great financial benefit to the town of Shelburne while still meeting the needs and interests of the city. And they were very collaborative in that process as they have been with our ongoing work in the stormwater arena. Can I just add a quick comment on that? I wanted to thank all the water commissioners for their efforts on that. I know how much was going on in the background and they spent a lot of time on that to your point. So I think we owe them a special thank you. They're not always front and center within the community, but a lot of time went into that and it's a great result for the community. So it's worked out well all around. Very well. It's a good team effort. Um, as you know, you folks have signed it. We did conclude the Asks Me 
union contract in recent times, and that's signed, sealed, and put to bed. We are presently working with two different cell carriers on amendments to leases for the, some of the panels on the water tower, just a bit south of here. Uh, in both cases, they wanted to add some infrastructure on there, so it triggered a review, and that's always a complicated process dealing with those, but we're on our way there. The Harbor Road sewer line replacement project, as you know, has been ongoing much of the summer. That's going well. We are still hopefully on track to complete all of that work by the time school starts. If you've been down that road in the last day or two, you've seen that they've started to replace the, the asphalt overlay on top of the excavated areas. We are presently also replacing some sections of sidewalks and curbing that hadn't held up well from when that project was done not that long ago. So it was a very cost-effective time to do that work on behalf of the, the community there. We are working in-house on a technology improvement plan. We've fallen somewhat behind on computers and other aspects of technology, and we are ramping up a plan to try to bring ourselves back online and up to speed with that, some of which you'll hear more about during upcoming budget conversations. As you know, we and a number of other municipalities were in court recently on the Conservation Law Foundation appeal of all of our wastewater treatment facilities and the Agency of Natural Resources, which had issued all of those permits. It will be quite some time before any sort of decision is offered in that case by the judge. It was a day of, or an afternoon of oral arguments. So CLF put on their case, the state's attorneys put on their case, and the municipalities were monitoring the case, but not trying to pile on additional arguments there. So trying to make our best case, I certainly had my own thoughts. I wish I could have had a chance to offer to the judge on this, but wasn't my place or time to do that. Library Newtown Center construction has begun. As everyone knows, access and circulation and parking in this area will be somewhat constrained over the course of time, but we will keep folks updated on what's happening there. We'll keep posting photographs on the project website and try to keep everyone up to date on how that is proceeding. Um, we received a letter this week from the state. This was a project I believe Dean had worked on the application for. You signed off on it several months back. The state did award the town of Shelburne over half a million dollars for the proposed bike path, recreation path up Irish Hill Road, nearly $600,000. Uh, they held back on the paving portion of that, but that's a project now that can start to, to move forward. So third time was indeed the charm. And as everyone knows, Shelburne Day is this weekend. Many municipal entities will have a booth there along with the regular farmer's market activity. And then that evening, of course, the rec department has their festivities and events, which will be hosted this year by the Vermont Teddy Bear Factory on their property. And an adjoining property owned by another party where the fireworks will be launched. So hopefully that'll be a beautiful day and a great, a great community day. So that's a summary of just a few of the issues we've been working on over the past three weeks since we met last. Any comment? Mary, any comment? No, thank you very much. Any comment from the public? Thank you, Lee. The next item is municipal records retention policy. Uh, I think uh, for purposes of, of uh, of simplicity, uh, I'll read this as a motion and seek a second, and then we can discuss from that point on. Uh, move that the town shall retain records for the time periods prescribed in the retention guidelines of the Vermont Secretary of State and any other applicable requirements of Vermont state statutes or the United States Internal Revenue Service after which time records may be disposed of using generally accepted management practices. 
if records exist for which no specific requirements apply, then the, quote, seven-year standard, unquote, under IRS rules for tax records shall apply. The town may choose to retain documents or materials which are deemed to have historical value for any period of time the town finds appropriate. There a second? Second. Seconded by Jamie. Any discussion? Yes. I, I, I have a question about whether... I, it sounds like there's very little standard for determining what kind of records will be kept and what qualify as historical records. Um, perhaps we can pass it as is and then consider some um, feedback from perhaps the historical society or others who may feel as though there are some records that need to be kept in original form. Yeah, I'd like to, certainly like to second that as someone who spent some of their career in museums. I'm really sensitive to that archival need and even though I it probably doesn't have to be in the policy per se I would hate to um, let it go without having some kind of process uh, in place that would um, assure that we don't lose things the genesis of this is that in the storage room across the hall if you took a tour you'd see that there's a vast array of boxes of records literally dating back to the 1990s you know, payment stubs and all sorts of vacation slips, things that have no inherent value and are taking up a lot of valuable space. There's no intent on anyone's part to just wholesale dispose of everything. But at least to have something on paper, it could certainly be amended at any appropriate time to allow some disposal to occur of records that are simply of no, no need to be kept any longer. You know, why don't we treat this as an enabling policy with uh, some detailed ex you know, ex plans for execution to follow? Sure. Uh, because that, uh, I, I think that, that might make some sense. And for the record in minutes, we'll note the fact that uh, uh, there will be a necessary follow-on in some detail of, yep. uh, of actual transactions, I mean, in, including and by no means limited to uh, disposal. Yeah, nothing's starting tomorrow. I'm yeah. sure you. Okay. I just had two comments. I, I'm not familiar with the retention guidelines of the Secretary of State, so I would just suggest we refer to however they refer to it. I don't know if they call it the municipal record retention, whatever the specific name of those guidelines is. I think we should include that so that we're clear on what the, the by actual, title. by title, right? And then just a, a drafting change. Um, after the first comma and I think we should say and in accordance with any other applicable requirements it just reads more smoothly to me if we okay. say that but other than that I, I think this works I think it's short and sweet and should do the trick so it's we'll, we'll correct start. it yes. to include a specific reference t yep. to those guidelines by title uh, and add according to any other as, a, as an edit, that acceptable, Josh? Mary? That's acceptable to me. Any further discussion? Any discussion in the public? Hearing none, will those sig approving with those corrections and that understanding of uh, specific guidance to follow at some future point, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those, aye. thanks, Mary. <laughs> and those opposed, nay? The ayes have it, all of us uh, voting unanimously. Colleen still not present for the meeting. The next item is to, uh, is to consider waiving zoning application fees for the veterans, in the specific case of the Veterans Memorial Tablets, and as well to consider a general policy for uh, town-owned, uh, uh, town, uh, town's own municipal bodies uh, generating fee re a fee a waiver uh, generating fee uh, requirements uh, to review and approve that policy statement. Uh, we did. There's actually two options to consider. There are copies out here. There's the one that was originally distributed, and then a simplified version. <clears throat> I 
And the, the genesis of this, you know, we had a similar conversation with the, the Newtown Center Library project recently, is, is the question of whether it makes sense for one municipal body to have to essentially pay another municipal body for a fee for its own projects when it's not really new revenue, it's simply taking it out of one pocket and putting it in another. And perhaps it makes sense to just not charge ourselves for these. There may be differences of opinion on whether that's an appropriate policy. In some way, if if there is a significant amount of work done by a department that, in some way, that's recognized mm -hmm. in the budget, I'm not sure if that needs yeah. to be in here. I'm not sure how to incorporate that idea into this I, into this proposal. Yeah, we reflected that in the motion, from yes. what I recall. Right. Yes, right. but I agree. And we I don't know how that flows through to the policy itself and. Well, first, the suggestion I'm making of the of the simpler, the simpler statements of the two, is because uh, it's not only projects owned and or proposed by the towns, commissions, boards, or committees. It's also by departments. And further, in cases such as a TIF, in which case the town might have a project interest, uh, I think we need to account for a greater uh, array of potential situations here. And I favored just a simple statement which says uh, we will waive all fees which may be required for town projects awaiting any definition that we feel later on uh, is necessary as to what a town project is. All the while, we made specific mention and provision and, could re and repeat tonight that uh, uh, waiving the fees does not uh, in any way compromise the, the uh, uh, credit uh, due uh, the planning and zoning department for its, its, its extraordinary work, not the least for any of these individual cases. Uh, but I think I, th I did not include that in the policy statement because I thought we were working on what, uh, what an administrative remedy might be. That is, how does the town manager establish an equivalence uh, w without a dollar amount? And I think I, I agree with you. I mean, it, and it's it's not really that different than the um, the, the the previous item that we can. Ma it, it makes sense to ma have a fairly clear policy, but there is a concern that once that policy is there, without the process, without the backup then they tend, it, you know, it sort of can be lost in the shuffle. So I hope that we can sort of memorialize that in some way. I'm not quite sure what the proper way is, um, but. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I personally would entrust to it, but I think that the, the distinction here is that the town manager has to determine what's a satisfactory administrative process, mm -hmm. together with Dean, obviously, uh, since this is an internal administrative matter, uh, and I'm not sure that's our purview in policy terms, first. Second, I didn't, uh, I wasn't certain that we had that information at this time, and this seems timely for the fact that we now have a second one mm -hmm. coming hard on the heels of the first, and therefore it seemed to me to make sense to have a simple statement at this point I and let the record, ref uh, you know, of, of the meeting reflect the fact that once again we are concerned uh, that uh, there be an administrative remedy to substitute here. Yeah, I, I agree with you. My only hesitation is people come and go, and we're in a time of transition. And if you don't have that memorialization or documentation to sort of support that understanding, right? Mm -hmm. It can just Agree. Come and go. So I don't know. I, it's not. I agree with you. It's not something we need to get in the weeds on. But I do think it's a a point that we somehow need to. Why don't we put a timeline on it? That I think the, and I'm not familiar enough with the background on the context to know. I know there were sort of metrics that may have been tracked relating to department performance or mm -hmm. otherwise. Was the sense that I got 
with yeah. respect to the application yeah. review and the revenue associated with those particular permits. So beyond that, I don't know. My only request would be let's make sure we well, I think somehow that's a good address idea. that. Why don't we? And maybe uh, that's the second motion that. Yeah, yeah, establish a timeline and and request Lee return to us with uh, what I'm calling an administrative remedy. You can call it whatever yeah. makes more sense right. to you uh, within several meetings. I, I mean, that's, that's a very good point. certainly achievable. I mean, one yeah. one strategy could be hypothetically at the end of an annual the end of a year budget report when you're looking at revenues and there might be an asterisk. So if yeah. it appears that revenue wasn't Credited We're but not counted. Credited yeah. but not counted. So yeah. that's clear in there. The last one was a big number, as you know, and it also related to borrowing from ourselves, yes. basically. Yeah. This one's a $30 fee. It's not the end of the world, but it just yeah. didn't seem to make sense to charge the veterans group a fee no, so they can the yeah. Yeah. improve yeah. a municipal I think park and monument. Reasonable. So we'll have a, we'll, we'll ha we can have a, a supporting second motion, mm -hmm. which which uh, d d requests that you return to us with uh, a viable policy at your uh, by your definition and by your execution as to how you're going to. Is there any further comment before we ask Dean to? Dean. Comment on this, I uh, would like to make a few remarks. Um, I first would uh, say that I would have appreciated a bit more of a consultative approach uh, or process before a policy reached the board. Uh, I believe that the vehicle that is being considered a policy is the wrong vehicle. Uh, the select board has adopted a fee schedule, and that has been the mechanism for establishing fees for planning and zoning as well as other permit processes. Furthermore, a waiver isn't necessary. Statute is explicit that fees are set by the select board. So if there is to be no fee for a municipal project, then there's no need for a waiver. It's simply that those types of projects are not charged a fee. I would go on to say uh, this issue is one where um, there can be a solution that seems like the right thing to do, but from where I sit, I have found that many of the things that people cite as pros aren't really pros, pros for adopting this type of policy, and many of the things that people say are cons are not truly cons. Uh, I would close by saying that the previous town manager didn't believe that such a change was, was necessary, and this issue had come up before, and in those instances, there were application fees charged. So it's a bit more complex. It seems like a strong, uh, straightforward matter. Um, but if the board seems to be intent on adopting a policy that signals development in this area, then I might suggest that you consider a policy that directs the manager to work with the appropriate staff to prepare a proposal to amend the fee schedule and then maybe provides some additional information regarding the rationale for it. Unfortunately, the materials for this meeting when posted online didn't have a link to anything that you were provided with, so I didn't really know what was before the board. So in that case, Dean, with the fee schedule in question, and I'm not, I think I've seen it before, but I'm not overly familiar with it, would it just, in your mind, would it have a couple additional line items that reference to a municipal project and a zero? It could be that simple. I would, I would suggest that there is no authority for a manager or an administrator to make a decision regarding fees. The statute is, again, very clear. It says the fees are set by the board and the zoning official should be charging the fees that are expressed in the decision that's made by the board. I don't believe there's any authority to delegate to anyone discretion regarding fees. So I would hope that it's more than two sentences. I believe that um, things will get sticky if there is a project that involves the town, a TIF or some kind of project that is developed through a development agreement. So I think that because it, it's not likely that we will be facing another application like the one that we just had. Now granted, the Veterans Project is a little bit different, but I could explain other differences that might materially separate it. So I think that there's time. I don't feel like there's any real pressure. Again, the authority for 
changing the fees always lies with the board. So anybody can come to the select board and say, I don't want to pay the fees or I don't feel I should, and this board can provide the relief. But to the extent that there's an established mechanism, namely the fee schedule, that should be used. And I think that that's the proper place for this. I'm not sure, Dean, where you read that we are delegating to the town manager the authority to decide to waive or not waive the fee. I, I'm just responding, Jerry, to your comments of a few moments ago that referred to the administrative. Well, we were talking about an administrative remedy of crediting, crediting performance, not, not some, some uh, I mean, that's what we were discussing. Is that not an issue with your department specifically? Uh, I... I haven't mentioned it. I don't know where that issue has come from. I do believe that one of the results of a policy like this is to undermine the budgeting process. The budgeting process essentially aims to track activities using dollars. That's what right. charging a fee does, is it reflects it. If there is concern that the dollars that we're just paying ourselves, it's not like the dollars are leaving the town's coffers. They're there to be used for something right, else. Right, but we're drawing down on a bond. Yeah, but we're taxing ourselves twice, you could argue. I think that's the principle that yeah. we're acting on here. I appreciate your review of the niceties, as usual. But I, I, mean, I, I, but, I don't know if it's just niceties. I agree with you in yeah. some ways. With the, I think there's some ambiguity around if we just say the town shall waive, who is the town? Right? No. Are we talking about administration? Are we talking about a particular department? Are we talking about us? It sounds like it has to be us on a case-by-case -case basis. There are some grants that uh, I, I would step back in time and um, recall that when the consultants were being interviewed for the library project, their proposals indicated budgets for the projects and those proposals recognized that part of the project costs were fees. So it's not like there is some lack of recognition of fees being part of the project. That's the first comment. Yeah. And then second, many projects are in fact eligible for outside funds. So it's not like the dollars are necessarily coming from the town taxpayer's pocket if they are something that can be paid through a grant, as one example. Yeah, well, that's, that's, good point. that's the example, yeah. That, yeah. That's the example yeah. that I raised with Lee. It sounds to me like we may be better here to ask Lee in the same motion uh, where we're seeking what we thought was a, was an administrative remedy for an internal administrative problem. If I mean, we're just uh, acting on, on that belief uh, to return with, with, a, with potential uh, changes in the fee schedule. I do think that that would likely be the better approach yeah. in the long run. Yeah. Um, whether you choose to act on the request to waive the specific $30 fee for the veterans, maybe we separate that out and yeah. return at another time. Yeah, separate that out now. This has and been suggested. Maybe the fee structure is the better way to address Oh, I that. think from Dean's commentary, it seems uh, obvious. I mean, thankfully, uh, he's, he's, I, mean, I meant, I didn't mean niceties in a silly way. He's, Yep. He's, he's yeah, no, introduced I, us to some of the subtleties and, and that are important. And uh, I mean, I hear him to be making such sense that I think we ought to change here. Yeah. Right. Waive the fee. Waive the Make a motion to waive the $30 fee. Mm -hmm. And then make a, a, a then second motion to pursue this you know, further, specifically to address it through the fee schedule, as Dean suggests. Mary, is that... Make sense to you? Absolutely. <clears throat> yes. In which okay. case? Do you have any detail around the, just for the motion for the Veterans Committee? I Memorial, don't. Memorial, do the tablet? Is it, I mean, I, we, can we, just can simply we simply move to a, waive the $30 fee in connection with the Veterans, Veterans Memorial, Memorial tablet Re application? Yeah, application, which is presently in process before yeah, the works. planning and zoning committee sure yeah. i don't believe there's more than one or that there would be confusion on that as to what that was no there's just one application right now okay second yeah, josh is seconding any discussion hearing none those approving please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. and including mary and those opposed nay the ayes have it and we'll agree to 
return at an appropriate right. time with a different approach to this question. Right. Reconsider the approach yep. and take Dean's comments. You, you want to put some timing yeah. on Under that? Under advisement. And we'll do it at a, at a time that fits into our other okay. priorities. All right. D Dean's, that's not an emergency. Does that make sense? It does. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thanks for Thanks, the Thanks, Mary. Next item is a comprehensive plan update, which Dean is here to provide for us. Thank you. I uh, am looking over my shoulder. We have oh. yeah, hey, Andrew, Andrew Everett's here. You made it. And, uh, How you hey, doing? Andrew. Good evening. Good. So as I understand, this agenda item has 30 minutes, uh, and I have a series of slides to go through. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go very, very quickly through Okay. Ah, overlap. Um, members of the board and people who have attended meetings uh, have seen some of this information before, so I'm just going to set the stage very, very quickly by reminding people the plans, a roadmap, or a blueprint that establishes a foundation for things like land use regulations, zoning. What goes into a plan is determined by statute or it's spelled out in statute. Um, there are sections that are required and there are goals that need to be addressed. There are also places in statute where a municipality can pursue some optional elements. Um, one of those is energy. If we have a plan that has more about energy in it, the plan can have uh, an enhanced status in state review processes. The responsibility for preparing a comprehensive plan uh, is carried by the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission prepares and then provides to the Select Board, is, which is the body that adopts. Right now, the comprehensive plan uh, is a essentially two-volume document plus some maps. It was approved fully, and by fully, I mean that it went through the full adoption process, including regional review, which resulted in what's called the confirmation. That happened in 2014, and that's what has essentially set the clock. Um, a plan will last for five years, and so Shelburne's comprehensive plan will expire in February of 2019. By uh, virtue of a change in state law, it will switch from five years to eight years. There's a document that suggests how communities can adopt their plans and, and uh, what they should include. Um, that document talks about focusing more on achieving a vision and less on documenting the, the past or the present. Design it around big ideas, use maps, images, and graphics, take out unnecessary inf information and unfeasible. Planning Commission has been uh, having its shoulder to the grind, uh, to the wheel, so to speak, since early 2017. Uh, something that was decided uh, fairly early on was the importance of reworking the document graphically, and this board was um, was generous enough to um, help us make some budget adjustments that allowed us to hire graphic designer Maya Smith, and um, she has done a great job. Current status, the Planning Commission issued a draft at the end of July. Um, we are doing promotions and posters and uh, postings on Front Porch Forum and such, getting some news coverage. Uh, and the Planning Commission has been holding some public information sessions. It had one last Thursday, and it will have another one in two weeks. The topics have been divided up um, to be covered on those different nights. We've split it up. There is the new design of the plan, but unfortunately I do not have a red line version, so the Planning Commission is asking everyone who reads the plan to be looking at it as though it's a, a, a new document from scratch, although I will be drawing some comparisons between the current plan and the proposed plan uh, in the moments that follow. We're on a very tight timeline, and so feedback from the board or from individual members is really crucial if there's a hope of having the plan adopted by the deadline. It's not the end of the world if the deadline is missed, but it does have implications. So to summarize the significant changes, graphic redesign, it'll be a single volume plus a map book rather than the two volumes. There's an emphasis in the plan on what I am, what the plan uses as the phrase placemaking. There's a lot of emphasis on conservation. 
uh, and there is greater emphasis on natural resource protection and, of course, stormwater. That's, that's mentioned uh, in new ways as well. So now, uh, and before I start summarizing the plan, I think maybe I'll just ask Andrew if there's anything that you want to add before I jump into the specific sections. No, I mean, I would just, uh, I guess, also, yeah. Yeah, sure. My name is Andrew Everett. I'm the uh, second in command on the Planning Commission. Uh, Jamie escaped our august board just in time for the real heavy lifting to happen here. And it's been a lot of work by a lot of people, but I will say that Maya's design work is really what makes this document stand out. So I've sort of taken on the envi enviable task of being kind of the final edit of it. And it was sort of amazing how, um, when it's in a prettier visual form, how much better it reads. Uh, so it's a much more digestible document, I think, than ones we've produced in the past. Um, and I think, you know, the only other appeal to the audience or people watching either in the room or at home is, you know, there's still some pictures we'd love to add to certain sections that we're missing. So if people have, you know, amazing pictures of Shelburne, we're still happy to collect them and add them. And um, that's been really neat to see pictures from, you know, middle school students up through you know, senior citizens in there. So it's definitely a, a civic document involving everybody. And I think it's just if I can weigh in, fair to say that the number one goal, even when I was on the board, was to sort of step up that visual game, right? And um, in order to make it more accessible to the community, just so people actually feel comfortable picking it up and reading it. Otherwise, it's really not serving its purpose, right? If it's just sitting. It, well, the new design will definitely draw people in. I'm, I'm not flipping you through page by page, but I am using as some images, um, pages from the plan. Uh, but just to reiterate what Andrew said, the Planning Commission wants to know what people think about the document, its design, and, and the words, the substance, which, as he said, uh, seemed to go down a little bit easier. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about each of the sections um, and do it quickly because I realize that we want to leave some time for conversation. But uh, I'm going to flash this slide that excerpts some of the language from the vision statement that is currently in the plan, and it's really not different or that different from the existing vision statement. Um, but it talks about Shelburne being a place um, that balances interests and there's an extreme sense of pride of place. Um, the future land use section is one of the most important sections uh, and the convention that's going to follow in the slides is I'm going to show you a slide that highlights the introduction to a chapter, um, puts the existing text and the proposed text side by side. Of course, you won't be able to read it, but I'm going to use it as a cue for me to tell you some things about how the new uh, future land use are, and the subsequent sections are different. The old future or current future land use plan section um, is fairly dry. It basically has an introductory paragraph that says that land use is, uh, it's, it's the culmination of all the different things that you put together and reflecting our vision, we have a map. Um, we don't go into much detail beyond that in the current introduction to the future land use section, but in the proposed land use section of the plan, the introduction really talks and more um, um, appealing terms about Shelburne's identity being intimately linked with its visual character and the characteristics distinguishing Shelburne from its neighboring communities uh, but are threatened by growth and development pressures and so on and so forth. But it, um, so it's more inviting, less dry and technical. So we can uh, come back to this if people would like. I'm also gonna flash some slides that have the exact text in the proposed plan and you can you can react to them if you haven't had a chance to look at the plan so far but goals in the future land use section include things like pursuing future land use based on placemaking well what is placemaking placemaking is the process of creating quality spaces where people want to live work play and learn so and so forth that is that is something that the current plan doesn't have it's an important part of what the proposed plan has. It does also, as far as land use is concerned, um, reiterate some points that have been made in plans over the, over the decades about reinforcing the compact and prominent village center surrounded by, by less dense areas and then the rural 
surroundings. This is a picture of the uh, revised future land use map. So again, you know, historically we've had a growth center around the village, that's the red. We've had a growth area two, which is the remainder of the sewage sewer service area, that's in the yellow or mustard color. Uh, and then beyond that, we've had rural. Um, we've had in other maps uh, areas designated conservation, and it was felt that we need to um, we need to emphasize that more. So the initial planning areas map, unlike in the current plan, the proposed plan has conservation areas added, and it has conservation areas of a wide variety of types. Natural resources section is uh, one of the longest. <laughs> the introduction to the natural resources section is on your left, as it is currently. Um, and on your right is what's proposed. But there is um, a, a more extensive uh, introduction to the natural resource section. And again, it's, it's doing more than describe the simple basic uh, things. It also does a better job of integrating topics. Uh, so in the natural resource section, it's talking about the importance or the relationship between natural resources and energy use and land use and so forth. And then some natural resource goals identify, conserve, and manage Shelburne's natural and scenic resources so they're protected and, and enjoyed now and in the future. Not, not earth-shaking. Um, nothing, nothing significantly changed in those examples that I'm showing you. But again, it is one of the longer sections of the plan, and it benefited from the involvement of the Natural Resources Committee. Cultural and historic resources section um, hasn't changed much, but um, the um, introductions are essentially the same, but there has been some editing done to recognize that we're no longer talking about two volumes uh, and updating for some you know, obvious changes. Uh, again, goals from that section, identify, preserve, and protect the character and defining elements of the built environment and landscape. Objectives include conserve the town's historic and cultural resources, and so forth. We make a lot of references to maps. It would be a good time to mention that the design version of the plan will have about a dozen maps in it. The current town plan has something like upwards of 30. Uh, they're in a separate document. The revised, the newly designed plan will have a dozen, and then there'll be a separate volume of maps. And with this document, as it's proposed, just as the current do one does, makes reference to those maps frequently. Growth and development section, that's where we find policies having to do with economic development, our uh, municipal services and facilities, population growth. Um, that introduction did not change significantly. And here are some of the goals, uh, growth and development goals, you know, to highlight provide in a cost-effective manner utilities, facilities, and services consistent with the rate of growth. Um, encourage growth and diversification of Shelburne's economy in a way that enhances general well-being. These are fairly straightforward. I, I threw in the one at the bottom because it illustrates this um, reference to stormwater, but also uh, I think reflects some of the recent events. Continue to cooperate and work with other municipalities towards a regional solution to solid waste recycling and stormwater. Build on the relationship developed with the city to address stormwater management and wastewater disposal, and that could also be expanded to um, to reference water if we'd like. Introduction to parks and rec doesn't change much. The goals and uh, objectives didn't change. Housing is another section that the introduction um, has been revised. There is more emphasis in the introduction um, on uh, substantial regional need for housing and especially for affordable housing. I should mention, Natural Resources Committee helped with the Natural Resources section, Hist Historic Preservation and Review Commission helped with the Historic section. We have a housing subcommittee that made great contributions to the housing section. There's been wonderful involvement from communities across the town. Here are some of the housing goals. Pushing forward, childcare, it's a section that is in the plan because of a statutory requirement. The wording of that section isn't changing, but it will look better when you see it in the plan format. Here are some examples of some of the goals. Transportation is another section that along with future land use and natural resources, uh, sees some of the most significant additions in terms of language. Um, there really is uh, an emphasis on transportation facilities in the town being available and provided for everyone uh, in all modes. It's really, it's really a multimodal plan. It emphasizes multimodalism um, much more than the previous or the current plan does. Um, 
recognize, and here's some example goals, recognize transportation planning as a fundamental element of placemaking. So you can't separate the idea of having the kind of places that people would like to live, you can't separate that from transportation. And that means you know places where they can drive, or places they can walk, or places they can bike. Um, energy, getting close to the end here. Energy is a section that over the decades has seen swings. Uh, a couple of cycles ago, it was pretty extensive, and then it was cut back. And now, the, working with the Energy Subcommittee, uh, the proposal is to have much more information, and that information is being included because there is the desire for this plan to help the town have more impact in the Section 248 review. So if someone came to town with a proposal for wind turbines, or if someone came to town with a proposal for large solar panels in, an, in a prominent location, the language and the maps that will be included in the plan um, will help the town's plan have that greater statute and uh, stature. Uh, and here are some of the examples, uh, goals. Um, these are significant. Towers and uh, telecom section isn't changing. And I believe, uh, again, here are some goals. They're from the current plan as well. And that's where I'm going to end it and be happy to answer any questions and let Andrew add anything he would like to. Uh, I have black and white copies. Uh, I think I have six of them for people who want to work with paper amongst the board. Um, you've all had access to it digitally, but if you would like paper, I'm happy to give those too. And for people in the audience, I also have a sign-up sheet. If you want to get a paper copy, please just put your name down on the sign-up sheet. Gene, can you recap us on the timeline? What so, we yes. So the timeline uh, ends in February of 2019, and working back from that deadline would have the Planning Commission um, conducting its hearings in November-ish getting it to the select board so that it could ideally have its hearings in early January. The, the schedule, like I said, is very, very tight. And if there are changes to the document after a hearing is warned, then another hearing must be warned and the Planning Commission needs to get a chance to comment and so forth. The, um, the idea is for the select board members to understand the document, be exposed to it, and if you have comments, get them to the commission so that they can make the changes before we take the draft to public hearing. So, so you're inviting our input at this point. I mean, I don't mean formal and, and an, to overdo the word, but to, be, to ensure timely input because this process is going to compete with budget and other things at the same time. So. This is our opportunity to to really make substantive input. Correct. Yeah, correct. And I think, you know, when I told the people at the public meeting the other day was that we produce the document, but you guys approve it and, you know, push it out. So it's got to get past us through you guys. So the closer I think we are in lockstep when we get to that point where we're done, if we know you're mostly are all in agreement with what's been created it certainly makes that last couple months a lot smoother and less risky to get to a point where we are without a plan for a period you, i'm sorry do you have any cushion built in on the planning commission public hearing side do you have a couple of meetings yeah, or is there it? well there is a little bit of a cushion in, um, the schedule that I, and i apologize that i didn't load it on this laptop um, it was the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Um, if we are more successful getting everything together for the hearing draft, there would be a bit more of a cushion. But we're not talking about a substantial amount right. of time. Um, we're also looking at situations where, in November and in December, those are those are difficult times because of the conflict oh, yes. with Thanksgiving. We are fortunate yeah. that. Uh, November has five Thursdays, I believe, this year. So there are some ways that we can keep on normal schedule, but um, it is an aggressive schedule. It, thinking out loud here, is there any has any thought been given to uh, a joint meeting if we start to get up 
against the wall on on deadlines is there any benefit to having us in the room during your public hearing process to try to expedite some of the possibly more substantial comments that might require more heavy lifting drafting wise it hasn't know. been mentioned but i think that that it is has great possible. advantages i don't know I, yeah i think that it would be a, um, a great advantage i think that uh, i wouldn't suggest doing it in connection with the event scheduled for the 23rd but perhaps in early september after we've given the public members of the general public an opportunity to come in with their ideas we can summarize all of that so that planning commissioners have all seen it the select board members have all seen it so you can you can think about your own comments uh, and look at them at them through the lens of the comments made by the members of the public um, but i would i would think if we, there's a way to schedule a meeting with both bodies in early september mid-september that would be a good thing to do have the topical public input sessions been structured or is it just open well it's been structured only in the sense that we divided it you know okay. by topic so a, a round half with a couple meaty ones in each one okay. and a couple smaller ones in each one um, i would say the general tone of the one i sat in was um you know very positive most people were really pleased with the document i missed the one earlier in the day but the same tone and you know most of the comments that we got were really spot on and great you know Good. the other things we you know had kind of partially right and they helped us kind of get it right or you know just some good thoughts for us to think about and how we could maybe bake that into the document but i would say you know expecting potentially some people to really resist what had been created or being unhappy with it um, almost zero good and turnout's good do you need us to put the word out or is there anything we can do to well i mean encourage. get people no get yeah. people paying attention to the process right it's august which is challenging are you going to be at the booth in chauvin days yes okay yeah. uh, i would just also say in addition to um, what andrew said about the reaction it's still a hundred page document right so for people who may have picked it up the first day and you know, we can track how many times people open it online, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's still a 100-page document, so I'm not sure how many folks really had a chance to drill through all of it to find something they might say, oh, it's great, but that, you know, that paragraph on page 72 really concerns me. I think there are people in the community, maybe even some in this room, who are going to be very careful readers of it, and Ross Graham, <coughs> who may already have a series of comments to, to give us. But the folks who showed up really hadn't had a chance to do that. Right. And some people come in with a particular issue or section, right, in mind right. where they're really looking to, whether it's transportation or energy, right, where they're interested yeah. in. Okay. I'm kind of, I'm, you, Josh may be too. Uh, I think we're all following in the same vein that Jamie has introduced about uh, what's the economy here of our, of our response rather than waiting until near deadlines or later in the in the fall when we're going to be plenty occupied as it is uh, i think a joint thing is probably very useful but i'm wondering whether you should schedule something in a next meeting or two uh, urging the responsibility of us to respond to the material to this point mm -hmm so that we sure. have a chance to hear each other's essential views or fundamental points. We start talking about what are items that maybe the consensus of the board is need further uh, addressing or where we're quite supportive, not in any final sense, but to give a kind of a cut of where we are uh, in, in parallel to what they're doing and maybe in advance of then meeting together. Uh, it seems to me the more opportunity we have uh, for them to understand our reactions, the far better here for all of us, uh, much less the document. So I might, uh, if we're agreed, ask Lee to think about uh, what's the best process for if, us if i can make a suggestion just an open item and i'm sorry no, i'm sorry I, I, yeah. if i can make a suggestion i would i would strongly uh encourage the board to consider assigning sections to individual members so that you're not 
all attempting to read all 100 pages. Um, I think you probably have enough interests that you might gravitate towards one or two particular sections. Sure, that's a great idea. And I think that you would be capable of reading it uh, with the eyes of your peers and read it critically because that's really what the commission needs to understand is where are their hidden conflict points. That's a great idea. That's a good suggestion. Big yeah. sense, Lee? If that's a workable approach for yeah. you, sure. And why don't we ask you to make some suggestions as to assignment? Uh, I think minute. that's a really good idea to divide it up. Especially um, for the four or five sections that have materially changed, yeah. right? That right. comes to mind as you have five people, there are about five sections yeah. that yeah. really... We wouldn't, I mean, we wouldn't be upset if you all read all right. of your pages. I no. mean, you probably well, are going to want to take one quick read through the whole we'll thing. We'll probably claim to anyway. Yeah. And then well, take I, a deeper dive for <laughs> a section. I have yeah. a head start, too, yeah. Yeah. on that. Yeah. And that's consistent with some other... Uh, Others, other uh, a major approach of ours in terms of in individual member responsibility for certain areas as lead. So it's very consistent with what we've been trying to do. I think that's a really that's sensible, a maybe by, even by the next meeting to sort of uh, ask, sure. to ask you to sort of lay out what you think just by, by uh, your suggestions, what might be a good distribution and further, and give it some further thought in terms of, I'm just a little worried about how time can grab you. It can, yeah, and absolutely. Particularly with holidays and everything else going on, so. Right, uh, I mean, we need to avoid yeah. people picking their head up in January for yeah, the first time I, and yeah, saying this just yeah. doesn't work. Plus some right? things may, may. It can't come back to the Planning Commission if we're going to yeah. approve a new plan in February. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. say, the other thing as you guys read it, and I think for everybody else who might look at a black and white copy or see it online is that the maps right now are kind of placeholder maps. They're not the finished uh, version. Um, it's going to be a lot more visually appealing, hopefully, but they will, they are kind of covering the topic at hand and will serve the purpose for now, but those should definitely get a little spiffier as things move on. I was immediately struck by, in reading this earlier, by the quantitative uh, uh, aspiration that you included in the case of affordable housing. Uh, I know that's dicey to have quantitative goals in, in a plan, but uh, my question, just a quick question was, are there other, other examples of that in the plan, and it, has that been a, uh, a focus? Yeah, I'd say one, you know, one of the specific <coughs> questions I remember getting in the public thing was regard to something Dean had put up there about the growth rate. Mm -hmm. and, it, and we went back and forth a lot in terms of, in some plans, it's been in numbers of people. In other ones, it's been housing units. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's been very specific. And so we came up and settled on a range of housing units. And again, we're kind of recipients of regional forecasting. And if you go back and historically look at the accuracy of that, it's been way off at times, way too high and low. And Shelburne's growth rate is pretty cyclical. And, um, you know, it's been relatively flat of late. There are obviously some specific housing projects in the works that, you know, for example, the Quinney piece could eat up that whole growth rate, you know, each sure. year that as it yeah. builds out. Yeah. So we know there's definitely some stuff in the pipeline. But that's another example where um, residents question like, wow, that seems too high. You know, other people might think well, that's too low, you know, so yeah. there's the number piece can get dicey for sure. There's a derivative of this is something Josh has spoken to often and, and far more in a far more articulate way than I'm going to. But strategy, strategic planning is really a derivative of this document and this effort. And it seems to me that where there's as, where where there's opportunity to be precise about goals, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the easier it's going to be to develop strategies to achieve them, right? Well, I think, I, I think it even goes broader than that in, sort of in the perspective, and I can offer my pr perspective since I attended both the uh, listening sessions on Thursday and probably made it through half of the document. And the two words that sort of um, spring out at me when I look at these, look at it, what's there is prioritization and implementation. And um, I, I, Dean brought up a number of points um, with regard to this that I'd like him to summarize 
if you don't remember what. Which what, comments are you referring well, to? I'll tell you. In, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment. Um, that it, it, this document is <laughs> lives up to a name of comprehensive, and there's obviously been a huge amount of work here, and a huge amount of wonderful ideas and wonderful perspective on where the town should be. Um, I haven't gone through and itemized the number of recommendations, as apart from goals and objectives, there's a lot of recommendations, and a lot of these recommendations are pretty defined and specific. And when I look at them, I go, okay, how is that going to get done, and who's going to do it in what time frame? And so it's all well and good to have a comprehensive plan of saying, okay, this is where we think we need to be. Strategically, how are we going to get there? And, and that's what I was talking about is that idea that you, you've t you'd mentioned a number of different ways of trying to address, address how do these things get done and um, what ways can we... Um, use it, or, or should it be in the document? Should it be in a phase after the document is um, approved to actually identify of all of the recommendations in there, what are the highest priorities? Who's responsible for, the, for dealing with those? And how, you know, how would they get implemented? Well, very oh, quickly, yeah. I, I mentioned that Several years ago, as part of one update, the Planning Commission did have a separate implementation document that attempted to list all the recommended actions along with who would be responsible, who would help them, and what sort of timeline. But it was really just, it was, it was too big. There were too many items on it. I will say that when the early stages of discussion took place, there was some thought given to having a much shorter document, and one way to make the document shorter would be to take the recommended actions and put them in a standalone document. We, the commission got to a point where it was, I think, just struck that it was going to be easier to follow the current format and, and get everything together as a way to meet the deadline. Calling, the, putting all of the recommended actions in a separate document would not be that difficult, but I think there was also this idea that it would be more useful for everyone if there was a way to go from a section that has 10 recommended actions to three or four, because those told you what you really needed to do. The rest of the stuff was, you know, we'll do it if we can. But with so many recommended actions, it, it is very, very difficult. And there are different ways that we could attempt to prioritize it, but it wouldn't be done as part of this effort, because unless the decision is made to do that because it'll take a long time. But it could be crowdsourced. There could be lots of ways to try it. Right. I just wanted to point out that, that I mean, I think that's a critical part of this whole process. And to think that, you know, we, we get to February and we get this approved, ah, we're, we're, you know, good for us. But that's, to me, where the really hard stuff starts is, okay, how are we going to really implement those and what do we start on first and how do we how does it get done so if 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 we can think about that in the review um, of the document and in some way um, uh, help getting us towards that goal or at least say, uh, stated, setting out in the document how we are going to move forward, then it's not just this thing that sits on the table and says, hey, we did that. Uh, yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, that plan should inform our work plan, the Planning Commission's work plan, all the committee work plans, the budget, right? It should all sort of come together in a perfect world, but you're right. I mean, the plan does come and go mm -hmm. at times, and once we get into the recommended actions, it might be a good exercise for us to just prioritize. It's, I mean, and it's, it's huge. Yeah, maybe, we could just it. Try, yeah. maybe we could do the extraction uh, yeah. I mean, in an informal way. I don't mean necessarily a, a bound document, but maybe that could be our structure. Yeah. I mean, we is also to say, review. Is to be able to take the recommendations, say, and put some ideas of 
who's, who would be responsible for that? And even, you know, getting a sense of which or which might be the prior, prior prioritization yeah. of yeah. them, and what steps would have to be taken to get there. Yeah. Yeah, we have the luxury of a phenomenal amount of planning experience in the room with us as we go through this. Yeah, so I mean, hopefully we can a, leverage a, that and unusual under, and strength. Yeah, absolutely. Reinvent the wheel yeah. on stuff. Clearly, the RPC lives and breathes this with municipalities. So hopefully we can. Yeah, it is an issue that comes up frequently in the RPC's review of municipal plans, whether it's 10 or 100 items is, well, what's what did the Planning Commission intend as the highest priorities? Because you can't do everything at once. Mm -hmm. And it can be very helpful from a select board or administrative perspective. You know, it may not be a perfect process, but if you've got 10, so I'm just picking numbers. If you had 10 recommendations in each section, there must be two or three that shake out in the Planning Commission's informal mind as, if we can only do three of these, which are the ones? It doesn't mean you ignore the rest, because if they're really important, they're there for a reason and as placeholders. Right. Yeah. But it would be really helpful moving up the chain. Yeah. And then, because the goal is to help get things done, as you well know, not just to do the plan yeah. for its own so, sake. It's a very helpful piece of that puzzle. Yeah, it's a good point. And one, just from memory, I haven't seen the current draft yet, but one idea might be, and I think Heinsberg did this, is sort of the, the gold star number one priority, where maybe the planning commission takes a cut on each section <coughs> to just, I know it's prioritized now, but maybe flag the, the number one go-get on yeah, each, and, and then we was, can... And I was thinking with, in each section, it would be pretty easy, too, to just um, delineate even if you just had three gradations, yeah, yeah. level one, level yeah. two, level yeah. three that'd priority, be great. Yeah. That'd you know, be could great. potentially that do could something be the like basis that. For our just, yeah, I mean, yeah. in some cases yeah. there might be one that's obvious, and other right. ones it might be like yeah. they're a little related, so it'd be yeah. this group of things would be the best ones to do. So, yeah, so. I think an important accomplishment of this is to is to answer the question that's always raised as to whether the plan's doable. Mm -hmm. And I think if we yeah. have uh, no one's ever going to have a complete answer that 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 uh, belies the definition of plan. But uh, I'd like us to have a plan that is considered doable in the in the in its general common sense. And uh, this would be a, a pretty serious step to uh, to that. Uh, well, here are some ideas. Uh, we have not least Jamie's expertise as well. And it seems to me that for a few meetings, we might go in parallel, and then from then on, uh, actively exchange with, with the commission as, as often as we can, even if in writing, and with goals toward uh, uh, prioritizing uh, and being mindful of implementation when we get beyond the questions of just substance uh, content, I mean, content questions. So why don't we look to you for we'll work some on, guidance we'll work with, on that, with Dean and uh, your assignment of what you would think would might make sense as mm -hmm. areas of responsibility. I think that's a great idea, Dean. And we'll go from there. Are, do you have more sessions scheduled? Yeah, so this coming week on Thursday, there's an afternoon session, 3 to 5, uh, in the room behind us. And then during our regularly scheduled Planning Commission meeting, the focus is on uh, citizen persist participation. So right. for, you know, two hours of the two hour plus meeting, we'll be focused on that. Well, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for the effort. Dean, thanks on top of thanks for the effort and for the, uh, the clear, I, I think this was great to get this presentation tonight and it's timely. And it's, I, it's a huge yeah. effort. I mean, yeah. we're in the last stretch here, six <laughs> months to go. So I know how much work has gone into this and thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible amount of work. I just want to give you guys some end-of-summer beach reading. So well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll take one of those hard enough copies. Of that, I'm, yeah. I'm, the, yeah. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the dinosaur in the yeah. room, so. I'm happy to hear all the subcommittees have worked well, and it just the process has been very smooth. So thank yeah, you to the say, Planning Commission. And definitely echo what Dean said, is that, yeah. that there were a bunch of groups that were just fantastic in terms of doing most of the heavy lifting on some sections and were super helpful to sort of clarify or explain why things would be important and what we really need to focus on. So it's, 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 great. it's incredible depth of talent inside of this town no for question. sure. Mary, do you want to add the comments? 
I'm good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Is there any comment in the public? Any? Thank you once again. Thank I think you. this was a very useful start to what obviously is going to be a joint process from now on in. And, Indeed, uh, it will. We'll yeah. well, we thank you. The next item is the CBC application process, a policy that we have had uh, under development for some time. And the, uh, we have arrived at the point where we're hopeful we can adopt. Let's hope so. <laughs> uh, I have just one or two edits, otherwise I think um, uh, we need to discuss, <clears throat> excuse me, my comments. Um, can I please make the edits sure. first? They're quite simple. <clears throat> sure. Under section 2B, as in boy, I would delete the last clause, such as CCR, PC, CCTA, etc., and just end it at agencies. Okay. Yep. That would be in keeping of, with the deletion of the reference to all the various CBCs, which we deleted at our la last meeting. Correct. <clears throat> the only other edit I have, and I, I do apologize for my voice, uh, the o only other uh, edit I have would be on Section 2E, 2, where it says... <clears throat> the procedure for select board appointment. I think just for the sake of uh, consistency, we should say the process for select board appointment because the very next section says appointment process. Or if you prefer procedure, we could just use the word procedure twice, one or the other, but I think it helps for reading purposes and flow. <clears throat> yeah, I think process is a good choice there. Doesn't sound so much like a medical procedure. <laughs> So those are my only two edits. I know that Josh, I, I, sh I share this with Josh and Lee, not Jerry, <laughs> um, only because I wanted to try to trim it down um, in terms of, um, I thought we had gotten pretty close, and, 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 and frankly, most of this rule now represents work of Jerry's story, which has been invaluable and very, I'm very grateful for it, but I wanted to, um, try to get this before everybody uh, in, in one um, package. Um, and I also, frankly, didn't think I would have much time to do additional edits after I handed this in a couple of weeks ago. So Jerry, I hope that this is largely acceptable to you in its current state. And I, I welcome any feedback you and others might have. And then at the appropriate time, I'd like to discuss my comments. Josh? Jamie? Uh, I'm pretty good. I had a couple just minor suggested changes in section F, sorry, 2F1 Romanet 3, the sentence beginning upon receiving. Mm -hmm. I thought we should just say we'll forward it to the applicable CBC chair or vice chair just to avoid confusion around who, well. who we're talking okay. about, just a minor edit Thank you. to the to the applicable to the, gotcha. CBC yep. just so it's not yep. misunderstood yep. as Good select point. board chair yep. and then I think mayor you had indicated on the the open meeting law change in section three mm -hmm. second sentence we were going to just end it after the word statute period yes okay I agree yeah I thought that made a lot of sense too I think you know there. This is, a, I think, an, a, an over a, a concern that uh, arises from uh, prior circumstances, um, and, which I I really understand. Um, but I think by just referencing the statute to be a little more general um, is probably more wise. I agree. Yeah. If you narrow things down, then you're you're eliminating other possibilities you might not have thought of. Agree. And then my last suggestion was on the last section, 3C, that we just include the whatever the reference is to the ethics and conflicts of interest. I forget what we call it. It might be changing, in fact, but right. whatever we end up calling the ordinance, I think we should just oh, oh, yes. make sure yeah. that that tracks the, the current track, nomenclature. Track yes. Yeah. 
And if I understand correctly, we'll be discussing the ethics ordinance or rule next, uh, at our next yes. meeting. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, actually, it'll be on September 11 due oh, to... Oh, right, that's right, because um, Lee's not around. Lee, Lee Susskind's <laughs> schedule, and of course, it's important for him to be here. Yes, okay, definitely. Great, thank you. Is there anything else that you have, Jamie? Where, I guess, was there still conversation amongst the board around the term limits? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to just go in order, Josh? Do you have stuff before that? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, been, I've been swayed by a number of the comments last time that um, it maybe is not necessary, um, that um, I haven't gotten any feedback that it has been a problem. So it seems that we, if uh, there are probably mechanisms, if the, if it it is a problem, since the um, uh, select board has the final say over appointments and reappointments, it's probably yeah. not necessary. I mean, my only issue with that, not issue, it's just more of a an observation that. There's no natural attrition on those boards, and there's no, when there are incumbents on the board for a long time, mm -hmm. people in the community aren't really motivated or don't quite see an opening or an opportunity to just yeah. put in a cold application, even though we do have, that's our prerogative to say, yes, we have a, a choice here between applicants, whether it's a reappointment of an mm -hmm. incumbent or a new applicant who's interested. That was my only observation on that is <coughs> and if, I, if we don't do any term limits then by default we're going to be sort of continuing that institutional yeah. which and, is fine if that's the and, and, the and, board's decision to do that I just and I and I that I I think I brought that up yeah. last time I mean so I'm I'm pretty wishy-washy on on this I mean I can see both sides of the of the, the thing I think New blood is always useful, um, and uh, but on the other hand, um, if people have the commitment and they really want to continue, it's hard to. I agree. Say no, so no, I agree. I think yeah. it's a it's a tough call, and maybe what we do here is just revisit this one down the road if needed. We can always amend this policy, right? Mm -hmm. It may not be the five of us on this board, but at some point in time, three people may decide term lim limits are a good idea for CBC appointments, so. Mm -hmm. And if I may, that was part of why I had raised a question earlier about having reappointments happen prior to new appointments, mm -hmm. because it yeah. almost perpetuates that. Right. Where if you blended all the appointments together into a single appointment process, it might at least implicitly encourage someone new by understanding that the, one, the reappointments don't happen first and therefore exactly, I'm already shut out right. before I even had a chance There's to. There's one open window. Mm -hmm. One window, everybody gets, a of interest. if I'm right. re-upping re or applying anew, it, we all get considered together. Right. It might give you a greater opportunity to blend the old blood you might really want to keep or the new blood who's trying to become involved and hasn't yet had a chance. It's a step in the right direction, at least, better than doing reappointments first and then automatically filling the board right, right. with incumbents. And I'm not sure if it's worthwhile you know, even having a statement that instead of making it a finite, you, there are term limits, making it more of a suggestion that you know, we think that um, there should be this, you know, uh, this seems like a, a, a reasonable length of time, and people may consider stepping off for a period of time, a, a session, and then coming back. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that would be sort of a middle ground. Uh, I don't know. Than, and I hope it doesn't come across as disrespectful to any no, volunteers no. who are on these boards, but the idea is more just optically, right? There's sort of a, on those particular boards, which are quasi judicial. Um, to the community, I think there can be some benefit to seeing new people on those boards and not just yep. an entrenched group I agree. of people. That's all. And I don't, I'm comfortable taking that out for now. I just, I'm glad we had the discussion and maybe we revisit it down the road. Mary? 
I'm in favor of removing it, um, and I think it, for the reasons that Josh discussed, and also um, it, uh, for other reasons that I will I will spare you. They're they're more um, in the nature of what, what you know, sort of what keeps our town a small Vermont town in a way. So that when you have a rule that says everybody cycles off in three years, um, you. I, I guess you, you you lose the the good parts of having someone on a, a CBC for a long period of time and having that institutional memory. This is what we've discussed before. I do see the flip side that Jamie is raising, but I think that there's natural attrition that can address that. <clears throat> I don't think people are discouraged from applying for CBCs. Um, I know that... Um, when I got involved, it was because people reached out to me and asked me to get involved. People were looking for more people to be involved. <clears throat> so um, I, I think it's a little bit of a solution in search of a problem, um, although I understand how it could become a problem. So I appreciate putting off the decision-making until another time when it feels it's more than necessary. I agree. I think the benefit was to introduce it. Uh, I think there's a, a substantial cost uh, to institutional memory, particularly in the case of these two bodies. And uh, I'm quite, I, I think we've scrubbed it pretty well. And should the occasion uh, arise that we feel we should revisit it, uh, it's a policy and it's as simple as doing that. So I'd favor striking uh, that entirely. All right, I will make those, uh, I'm sorry, there may be more changes, I apologize. I was about to volunteer to make the changes and then email the new draft to Lee for finalization. <clears throat> but uh, uh, there may be more comments, I apologize. Uh, Josh might have more. No, any more? Nope. I don't have any more. Okay. Would, I have the would, you, would you object if we, if we subjected this to vote with, with the corrections as, as noted? Mm -hmm. Are you asking me that question, yes. Jerry? Yeah, no, absolutely not. Great. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to hang on. I think that's a good approach. So we've noted Let's we're striking 2i, right? I'm sorry. We're striking 2i in its entirety. Hang on, 2i, 2i. Term limits. Yes. Yes. We're substituting process for procedure in E2. It would be two. It would, I'm sorry, Jerry. It would be striking two H altogether. H d discusses terms. When when we last um, met, we talked about um, H and I. Um, really. Oh, term. But but peeling off the development review board and ethics. Yeah, but one, H, H, re H refers to the term of appointment for each. Oh, sorry. Yes, you're yeah. absolutely right. My yeah. apologies. It should be H so, and I. My bad. No, we've yeah. got it simple. We've got it simple. Oh, and I'm then sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was to be, and finally the uh, the change right. to uh, executive session question and the public. And then we have to make a note to make sure the rule tracks with the new ethics rule. Yes, and, correct. Um, right. Correct. Whatever we end up calling that. Sarah, do you want to comment? Yeah, I just had a question. I just want some clarification. I'm Sarah. And I live on Falls Road, and. I was just I just want to make sure that when these come up for renewal are they you know people already have the position are they are you going to post what's coming up so that other people could apply for that yeah that's yes. what yeah I want to that's what no. I thought this was sent document was saying yeah. but I wasn't positive no. so I wanted clarification no, that's on the that. idea that's okay. the idea that's, thank you, you know, to, to invite the interest of as many people as we can Sarah yeah yeah That seems to me an acceptable amount of, yep. of corrections, fine. call them edits, such that we can. I think, I yeah. think you can. Listen for a motion to adopt this policy. Mary, would you be so willing? Yes, I'll make a motion to adopt the policy as amended. <coughs> Mary moves. Second. Josh seconds. Is there any further discussion? Any discussion from the public? Those who are approving the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. 
uh, Mary voting in the in the affirmative. Yes. Thank you so very very much for your I'm glad to considerable be effort. <laughs> and before you leave this topic, did you want a second motion to approve the new application form? Yeah. Probably should. Oh, yeah. you're absolutely right. We should have. Yes. Oh, Let's one, do that. Can I make sure. a comment and just a question? Thank you, Lee. Um, will this application, I mean, it looks like this is, they hand you a piece of paper. Will there be a fillable PDF online? That would be a great solution to having this in addition to a paper that form. Way, that way it's easier yep. to, to move amongst people. I'll see that we, we have the ability to do that. Thank you. Okay. And the acknowledgement block on the last page, could we just add a link that says after the social media policies, which can be found at great blank, idea. the URL or? Great idea. That's a good so idea. Yep. People actually look at it and understand what they're yep. agreeing to comply with. Great. You, get, you do hear that, Mary? Can you repeat it, please, Jerry? Josh is, uh, Jamie is suggesting in the final paragraph of the application, yes. which starts the information I have submitted, that following interest in social media policies, last sentence. Yes. Uh, that we add the, add right. the URLs which to the web Which can be found at whatever the... Adding which can be found at... Wherever they're accessible. With some specification. Online. Which can be found at, and then give the URL link. On the yeah. web, on, yeah. right. Yes. That's fine. <clears throat> Any other comments? No. Josh, you indicated maybe you had one? No, no. I no, I don't. Jamie, any other comments from the public about the application itself? None. Mary, any? No, thank you very much. Do I hear a motion to approve the application for appointment as presented so, with the correction to the uh, affidavit block, or what did you refer to? The affidavit yeah. block. Second. So move. Josh moves. Jamie seconds. Any further discussion? For those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Thank you so much, Mary. You're very welcome. Um, and Jerry, would you mind if I signed off now? I do. I really do want. Well, no, I'm going to stay on. I really want to hear about the review of ideas and that kind of thing. I'm going to hang in there for a little while longer. Okay. <laughs> well, you've you've been a, a real troop a real trooper to this point. So. Well, thank uh, you. I apologize. Oh, not not. We we're thankful for your participation. I'm going to put you on mute, mute now for a little while. <laughs> All right, the next item is a liquor license, in which case we constitute ourselves as the Municipal Liquor Control Board by motion. Do I hear one? Sure. Josh moves that we establish ourselves as the Municipal Liquor Control Board. Second. Jamie seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. So this is more of a formality than anything. It's a request for a first and second class liquor license and tobacco application for the new owner of the Shelburne Field House. So these licenses are issued to persons or business entities, not physical locations. So even though they've already had this license, now that there's a new owner, the state requires that a new application be filed. Um, I'm not aware from my conversations with the PD that there have been any issues or concerns at this location with its prior owner, and I would hope we don't have any either with the new owner. But that's the reason this is before us tonight. And it requires each of your signatures if you are inclined to approve it. Well, either way, whether you approve it or deny it. Do you have that's a handy motion well. in terms of... Be a motion to approve this liquor license and tobacco application for SFH LLC for the Shelburne Fieldhouse. And Is there a motion? To PD has done the diligence and... Yeah, I'm not aware that there's been any issues or concerns there. Is there a motion to that effect? Sure. Josh yes. makes it. Jamie seconds. Second. Any discussion? Those of you approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those... Aye. Thank you, Mary. And those opposed, nay. 
the ayes have it. And then if we could get we, signatures, and I'll make sure I get that back. Okay, and meanwhile, I'll... Yeah, may I take a one minute break? I'm listening for a motion to resume general session. Motion to resume general session. Made by Josh. Second. Seconded by Jamie. Any discussion? Hearing none, those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Would you like us to do that now? To I'd be love sure to take a one-minute break, if I may, please. Of course, yeah, we'll sign one. So if you three can Are sign Are we on the left side here? Jerry, okay. if you'd be so kind as to sign the minutes while yeah. brief recess. Do any of the others of us want a Can I make one hard suggestion copy? on these? I don't know if it's been the practice on the, the license approvals, but I mean, we see this when we sign it, but when we, when we see the individuals as opposed to a, an entity, if the there's a, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I would just make a disclosure that I'm social acquaintances with the owner here. I don't have any reason to see that that would prejudice my my vote here but i i think it's important for us to sort of acknowledge the person behind so the that's probably the corporation a, when we're going through this state just for the, the complex yeah. yeah yeah that's good practice yeah we i should, didn't realize that's what this was when, when uh, lee returns we'll make a point of uh, copying us with all the application yeah. material We may have a few hard copies of the plan. If anyone wants to take one home tonight, uh, put you to sleep. <laughs> You're right. That's that's a that's a good point. Oh, sorry. There you go. We're going to be consulting in this next item a list that I'm not sure all of you have seen or that's, I think it's been available to you uh, of potential ideas, issues, concerns. Well, we'll make it a point to have that after our discussion to have that available. Mm -hmm. The point was made, Lee, in your absence that uh, it would be a, an important practice to include the application material next time as a routine with uh, uh liquor uh, liquor license uh request oh, to distribute that yeah so. two more in advance yeah i mean when we're in a quasi-judicial capacity as a liquor control we should understand who the individuals are because there may be a conflict as opposed to the good point the legal entity yeah. that yeah nobody i didn't knows. actually it's receive just, it till today but yeah. i can get those in yeah. advance yeah. and have those for you yes thanks lee good point the next item is to review list of ideas issues and concerns and set priorities for a work plan. Do you want to take the lead on this, Lee? Sure. And I realize I didn't make copies for folks in the audience, which I could run and do quickly if that would be helpful. I think I think Fine with it, that. I think it likely would if, if nobody minds the few minutes yep, in apologize. between. Apologize. I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can I think so. So what you'll find when you see this is simply a list of of things. And we can start through and then when you have the copies available to you, it'll make much more sense for you. You want to uh, sure. I mean, I, well, um, yeah, I can go through because most of the first ones are um, well, well, maybe I think we should the, we should, it's the, the ground yeah, I mean, the, of what this, we're trying to do The here. stage setting is we had <laughs> discussed this at the retreat at Teddy Bear mm -hmm. when we first went through our 
prioritization exercise, and this is sort of a check-in on adjustments to that list. Right. Correct? Additions. Right. Yeah, and Status I think, updates, and I think new we, issues. We're interested to establish some priorities at this stage. Now, having accomplished parts, uh, good parts of this, right. and in process of other parts, uh, and I, uh, my sense is it's it's uh, it's now less a matter of introducing uh, things that we think need to be done than it is of economizing our time heading into the fall. So it seems to make sense, and we did speak to a staging, you recall, mm -hmm. at Vermont Teddy Bear of sometime in the summer, revisiting uh, for what, as well for what else may have been introduced in between. So is our goal here to, um, some of these have dates that are specific, um, and I'm trying to think of what the structure we can use to um, deal with things that aren't don't have dates or how how do we how do we work on doing that prioritization i mean we give it uh, my, one star two star my immediate three. suggestion josh might be to divide things into two large categories uh one of which is budget implications mm -hmm. given the timing in other words an item may have more significance now in advance of budget than it might have we might have had once budgets completed that kind of uh, kind of sense and uh, the other category being uh, policy uh, issues that are, are that we're willing to rank in some uh, in some uh, roster of significance mm -hmm. okay because I think I don't think they're mutually exclusive I think we can handle both budgetary and policy yep. things similarly yeah absolutely uh, and this was this list, the list we looked at. Yes, at it, Teddy it, Bear. It's, well, it's, 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 no, it may not have been. It, no, no, that's it's, why. It's, it's a it's like an amalgam, I think. Okay. It's that list, plus I think there are some things that may not be on the list. I I don't know. Lee put together the first list. I'm not quite sure. So maybe you could tell us how you assembled the list. So this was a list based on, and as Josh noted, it was the list that we had looked at briefly at a prior meeting, um, it does not necessarily okay. include everything that might have been from your, your right. teddy bear retreat, which I was not present right. for. So this was a list of things that either I knew were coming our way, like the budget being a most obvious one, questions that had been raised in the last several months since I've been with you, mm -hmm. or some of these are my own suggestions, or one or two that Josh and I had talked about over time. Um, so it is an amalgam of issues, past, present, and potentially future. What intrigued me in working through this in preparation for tonight was how many of them are actually either settled or underway or things we know we need to do, and there didn't actually on this particular list shake out to be all that many new items, that, which was not what I had anticipated. Yeah, and I guess that's why I'm um, without... So there may Remembering be others. Remembering that you old added. list, I do feel like we're we're missing a few things, which is fine. I mean, we can walk through this we list, to, but we always. I'm sure you can always add to a list. We can <laughs> certainly add to the list. Well, and there's one I'm that sure I will. would definitely like to add, and that's the discussion with South Burlington on uh, oh, uh, right. sewer treatment. I did mean to yeah. give you a uh, quick update in the manager's yeah. report on that. But I think, as Lee indicates, we we haven't been doing too badly, gang. <laughs> you know, we're making progress. We've been moving our way pretty much through. Uh, yeah, I mean, do, does it make sense if they're just to start at the top? And if anybody has sure. questions or concerns yeah. on anything, and nail down the let's dates. talk about it. But if you, uh -huh. we're comfortable yeah. that it's on track and yeah. making good progress, then we don't need to spend a lot of time on it. You right want to just step us right through sure. it? Sure. Sure. First one being stormwater issues. As you know, you appointed a stormwater advisory committee some time back. They've been working diligently. There will be a request coming your way at the next meeting to warn a public hearing to advance that ordinance and fee structure and launch that program. There is a definite question uh, in the community about uh, all uh, homeowners paying the same amount. And we're aware of yes. that. Yes. yes. 
So there's no question in my mind that that's something we will want to dwell on. We will. No. The ethics or uh, right ethics conflict of interest that will come back before us on September 11. Lee Suskin will be here to help work us through what their committee's final version will be. Town plan review. You heard that presentation this evening, and we talked about a strategy to come back to you at the next meeting with some thoughts about how we might integrate select board into the planning commission process. Library town center construction. We will give you regular updates. At each meeting, I think that's probably helpful and important for you and, and everyone. We're meeting weekly. There are for weekly construction meetings, yeah. steering committee meetings, and other meetings to resolve <laughs> matters there as are, they arise. There are plenty of issues. I don't know whether we mentioned it the last time, but just as an aside, the library had, to me, an astonishing 85% use factor in the new location. I, for some reason, I was really, obviously, pleasantly surprised that that's, that shouts volumes about the support in the community of the library. They moved mm -hmm. to a different location. And what does that mean? Eighty-five percent of, of the regular, regular users of their regular business is still is showing still, up. Is yep. showing up there as regular patrons on okay. a patronage volume no. yeah. visitation. And they have other measures that are that are uh, derivative or similar, and they show similar. Uh, I mean, I think that's just a... a well, we got lucky with the location. It's a great location. Yeah. Yes, it. it is. It's and I fantastic spoke... credit to the, to the library staff and, and trustees. And... Yep. It is indeed, and I met with the new owner of the property today who is very happy to have the library there for this period of time yeah. and wants to do helpful things for them. For That's example, great. adding a sign to the building so visitors to the property know where that is, working with us on the sign out by the road. That's great. Right. Very collaborative. <coughs> Town manager search underway with the committee and the consultant. I have not heard anything on the rail salt shed litigation, but clearly as that no. continues to evolve through the process, I'll keep you informed every step of the way on that. Yeah, and the, the step is the oral argument will be scheduled right. at some point by the court. It just hasn't happened yet. Right. The courts usually take August off, so. Oh. <laughs> just how Lucky it goes. Them. Yeah. Unlike this board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> CBC policy, you approve that this evening. Congratulations. Personnel policy update, we'll bring that to you at the next meeting with some minor updates, the annual review and updates and corrections to that. Nothing major there, just a couple of pieces that can stand to be updated. Are we going to deal with the, with, the trans, with the migration of the social media policy to the ethics ordinance Well, at that I, time? I, 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 I must admit, I've, I've gotten quite confused as to where this all sets. I mean, previously when this came up, um, the social media policy was part or as, uh, associated with the personnel, personnel policy. policy. Right. But when the personnel policy was approved at that point, we had decided that we would not decouple we, we, it. We not couple it. We didn't yeah. really even review it. So it sort of stands out. In need of it's, review. It's a conspicuous absence. Yeah. Right. And so I think, yeah. I mean, even though that's, you know, one of the other items, I think I, I would say it's something that we have to address separately. And I don't see any reason why it, it, it shouldn't be a separate entity. With some priority. Yeah, with a priority. Since it's, as, you, as it's stated here, it, it, it factors into both the personnel policy and the CBC issue so I think it, it it is something that we do have to address and ethics and the ethics and, and that's what yeah and the yeah. ethics so just so I can understand the nature of your question or concern there mm -hmm. is already existing in the personnel policy a section called social media policy right so is right. your suggestion that that needs to be a standalone yeah policy well, and this is what I'm saying is that when the personnel policy was approved, whenever that was. Last February. This, we had decided then that the social media policy was not, we had not discussed the social media right. policy. Right, right. And it was separated out. So 
even though it may appear to be part of that, I don't know what happened in the. I think that's right. That's my recollection as well. I don't, it, it, I don't think it's. You, you should check that because I don't know yeah. if it's actually part of the policy that was approved by the board. Yeah, because we really never we really never reviewed the social media policy because there seemed to be an urgency to do the personnel policy. Yes, no, and it was true. it was we a lot of material, and I think there was some fatigue that set set in yeah. after the personnel yeah. policy yeah, exercise, yeah. and we yeah. just said let's right. yeah, we revisit social set media. It aside. I'm not sure we could claim that it's incorporated in, in the existing. Okay. Right. Okay. So we'll have to check, check with Ann on that because it is in that. the published version that is right. given to employees at this time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that may be an error. Yeah, we should go back and recheck. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll add that to a list that maybe that. Yeah. See where that there, falls in the priority, yeah. and, and there is some urgency to it. I well, think. given you know, given its reach, I mean, we've got three documents uh, in which it it's a it's a feature, uh, I, I, and and given the subject matter, I think mm -hmm. that should should enjoy some priority. Do you agree? I th I think we should. Okay. Pick that one back up. Uh, support services contracts, we contract with a number of entities, whether for legal services, could be copiers, um, auditors, mm -hmm. and the board IT. had expressed an interest mm -hmm. in revisiting that, so we'll bring that back up next meeting. Next meeting. How do you anticipate that happen? How will that happen? Will we get a current, the current documents that are associated with those contracts for us to review before? The meeting. How how are we planning on doing that review? I guess that's my question. No, good question. My thought would be to find out what are all those contracts, assemble them, and give them to you in advance with a, as I typically with a summary sheet. Here's how we handle legal or copiers or any of those external <laughs> services. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we pay. But here's the actual document if you'd like to see those, and we can at least we may not come to a landing on all those answers, but at least we can take a look at them and see how are we doing, do they make sense, should we put these out to bid on what kind of time frame or regularity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think it would approach. be useful, Lee, if you, uh, would, without going into a lot of detail, just simply noted uh, what the process of renewal has been mm -hmm. for each, whether they've been formally renewed at all, uh, and if so, on a periodic basis or are there provisions in the contracts for renewal? I mean, I don't have much of a sense of whether some things are just uh, evergreen or whether some things have a provision in them that these sunset in effect, mm -hmm. if not renewed by right. May 1 date certain. Right, so it would be probably useful in shorthand. I don't think yep. we need a great deal of d detail, but I think that'd be useful to know too. Sure. Union contract, that's done. Social media policy, we just talked about that, so we will revisit that for sure. Head shop ordinance, we talked about that at a last meeting. It may come back up at another point in the future as marijuana laws evolve through the legislature, but for now, I think we're agreed we'll put that one to rest. CLF appeal, I gave you a quick heads up on where that is right now, and again, we'll keep you informed every step of the way. Dog park relocation, it's in process. I can give you a quick summary now or at another time of where that currently rests with the committees. There's not much to say about it. There is a site that's being evaluated for wetlands and to see if it's even legal to consider it. If it's not, I'll have to go back to the drawing board, so to speak. Charter governance review in the same manner as you've been reviewing some of your policies. That's an idea that I was suggesting might be worth reviewing at some point in time. There are one or two items that stand out to me as at least intriguing questions, if nothing else. But you may want to wait till there's a manager more permanently in place to revisit that issue, if at all. The only, the only thing I would say, and I, I don't necessarily disagree, is that um, for any if there are going to be any changes in, that we would consider, then there would be a length, a, a process, um, potentially leading to a public vote in March. Yeah, which which would be it, shorter for sure. Yeah. yeah, and so if we're going to, if that's something that we're going to 
want to hmm. do, then we're going to have to start sooner than later on that yeah. unless yeah. it's going to be way off in the future. So good point. I would think that at least we should identify potential issues that could be brought up um, and to see if we to the point of go no go. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I would say by the end of by the second September meeting, we're either going to pursue them or not, yeah. given the fact we already have a comp plan. Mm -hmm. Sure. And you know, I can give you a heads up on just a few items that stand out to me, and you can decide whether okay. they're okay. worth pursuing or not. Not okay. to bother. And and I I assume that we can all contribute to that idea if there are things in there that we think. Yeah. And remembering, it's good you raise the question of the vote and the process, because ultimately, of course, the legislature also has to approve yeah, that's a, any of more those. Complicated. So it's not something that's entirely in our control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Staffing structure review, I think there are some important matters to consider there. It may come in as part of the organizational improvement plan that we have already agreed we'll bring back to you as part of the capital budget. Right. And that's again, first, there may be some meeting pieces in September. Of that. Uh, it will be coming up sooner than we think, yes. Municipal infrastructure, again, the uh, a logical time to have that conversation might well be during the capital budget and planning cycle. Yeah, Definitely. I think, I think absolutely. Uh, this will come up in the town plan discussion as well, I yeah. suspect. Yep. I think that's going to be a major uh, consideration in budget, personally, I think that yep. whole question. Mm -hmm. I think so From too. From trail maintenance right on to building maintenance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's a major yep. a question of, of investment need. And, you know. <laughs> it's been suggested that economic development may need some attention. I'm not quite sure. I have my own ideas, but I'm not quite sure what that means in terms of this board's discussion, involvement, priority for action. But it's been raised as a th one of those questions that we should consider in this yeah. priority list. At one point, Lee uh, prepared some stuff. In fact, Jamie and I, the first time we really got together was at yes. a, a really well worthwhile, I mean, a, a valuable seminar, uh, which was a little more than the usual EDA, downtown St. Albans grants and, you know, stuff that has limited applicability to us. But this was a very interesting discussion among other things of workforce development and availability and so on and I think the I think with Dean's help the issue as we discussed it divided over whether you wanted to mount uh, a fairly comprehensive economic development and conventional economic development initiative with possibly even in the future extending to somebody responsible for it or whether you wanted to d build a cadre of, 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 of experts uh, available to the town when targets of opportunity presented themselves. Uh, so that it's a more, more targeted, more specific, uh, but you, you build capacity when someone calls your office and says, we have an interest in X and you can provide you know, on a short, you know, with short notice three or four, half a dozen people with expertise in the community who are then willing to act as, as information providers and so on. And somewhere maybe in between, maybe favoring one end over another. Uh, targeting may also be a question of policy, about what about, about selecting uh, the types of economic uh, development that we wish and going after them. So uh, the first go around, I think, recognize that that's a, 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 a very large category of, of uh, uh, steps and activities and events, and the question was what would be appropriate to, you know, what scale would be appropriate to yep. us, uh, at the same time recognizing we really ought to have some signpost somewhere that says economic development open, yep. you know. Yeah, on this one I was wondering if, um, would it be helpful to invite someone like Frank Coffey from GBICN or one of his colleagues to just 
talk about what economic yeah. development yeah. means mm -hmm. to begin the with region, the regional right that. start the conversation yeah. around here's how we think about economic yeah. development mm -hmm. here's how you know a couple examples specifics right which help people understand okay company x y and z has done yeah. this and there are certain yeah. go, moving mm -hmm. beyond the state level Mm -hmm. programs and no, making it, has it much be, more local. It has to be from And maybe it's a few other us. people that we invite in who have been very engaged on whether it's, you know, people like John oh, DeBruyler or a, a few really others good idea. who yeah. have been engaged and can yeah. speak to here are some things that are on our radar where maybe if they were sitting in these chairs, they'd think about mm -hmm. policy decisions yeah. or other ideas that might just start yeah. to yeah. get traction with it's, us. it's definitively regional. Yeah, no, yeah. Just we're, we're not going to pretend to it. Doing it have a component of this? Not as much in that particular arena. Um, I certainly have my own thoughts from my own experience yeah. that might be helpful. And just so you're aware, also along these lines, the uh, <coughs> Shelburne Business and Professional Association right. will yeah, be hosting an event I'm invite uh, them in. later in the month on this topic. And the, oh. the general theme that seems to be merging relates to vision and how do we get to substance? Not so much looking at programs and entities, and, but can we create a shared vision of what this would even look like and what would success Is it look between like? now and the 28th? It will be tentatively at this point it's slated for September 26. Well, maybe we could invite them to come on the 28th and, and introduce, it, introduce it there. So that they're hosting an event, but it Make a presentation as an, as an introductory matter here. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the Planning Commission clearly is going to get into this during the public hearings on the comprehensive yeah. plan. And right. And they've been interacting with the yeah, chair of, of the commission to make sure that this integrates into the plan and doesn't feel like somebody's treading on yeah. anyone else's I don't feel turf. like right now we necessarily need to come up with a concrete plan. I think as long as no. we're... Just start talking about this them. topic and yeah. starting to build a network and people yeah. who are familiar with Shelburne's challenges well, and I think opportunities, a, I think that's a, great, a good thing. A great right? start like, would be to invite them 28th, just to come and, and kind of introduce it right? and start have a series of presentations like that. Well, we, you know, I think that... Uh, more I, informational, yeah, right? Yeah, like, couldn't agree more. Let, let's hear yeah, couldn't agree from more. the experts that's, that's and then... Like a, a way to start the process. Right. But placemaking is an interesting concept uh, in it is. economic development terms. It is. You know, that's an interesting... Uh, yep. So moving along, there had been suggestion at one point that we adopt some form of a short-term rental zoning bylaw or municipal ordinance. Uh, personally, I'm not recommending we pursue that at this time. Um, the real question would be, what is it we're really trying to regulate? The issues that have been raised to you by neighbors were behavioral, behavioral issues yeah. that won't be solved by an ordinance. Mm -hmm. You could have poor behavior by residents of a permanent home, renters of a home. doesn't mean it's not an issue, but the question is, what is it that the town can actually do about yeah. people and behaving how enforceable? poorly? and how enforceable yeah. is it. There's also been some legal questions about whether short-term rentals are reasonably and equitably enforceable because how do right. you actually know who's living in a house at any given day and is it yeah. really well, even our business to know? To know? Yeah. I think we should just monitor this um, yeah. and defer to the Planning Commission and if they recommend that we pay more attention to it then we can pick yeah, it not back ignoring it, time. but not ignoring. Not sure but if there are more issues that come up, then we can react. But mm -hmm. it do, I agree, it doesn't seem urgent to me right now. Uh, the next one is a topic I've been thinking about. Josh had suggested it as well, and the notion being, what can we do to improve the audiovisual facilities in this room? As we all know, projecting to a side wall that doesn't reflect well. It's hard for everybody to see, including the viewing audience. Right. And there, I have to believe I've seen, we've all seen other meeting rooms where there was a permanent system in place that just is more clear and useful for everyone. And if we had hypothetically a projector hanging here with a real screen, a direct feed to VCAM, folks at home can actually see the screen, folks in the audience, you as well. And whether we rearrange the room or just 
put in some things. I don't think there's a whole lot of money involved, but I think it would improve the usefulness of our public meetings dramatically. We host meetings almost every night of the week here. We got yeah. to the point last year, it would have been before you came, uh, where we had quite a number of ideas. Yeah, and I, mean, and I think the, 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 the momentum kind of fell off considerably. There wasn't much of a follow through. On no, that. but we, we, there were really were, uh, with Josh's help, there really were a lot of interesting ideas in terms of uh, even rearranging this room. Yeah. Remember we talked yeah. about. Yeah. I mean, everything, as Lee says, everything we're talking about is really fairly low dollar amount. Um, high there, impact. There were some ideas dollar. that were pretty high dollar amount. But we don't really need that. I mean, anything we do is going to be a substantial improvement. Um, and um, I, I can't, personally, I can't see anything being a higher priority than this. Because if we're here to do the town's business, then we have to make it as easy and as, as, as um, Inclusive. useful for the yeah. town to participate and to see what's going on. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I've had a few yeah. folks come in informally just to take a look, give us some conceptual ideas. If it's something you'd like to pursue, we can take that the next step, get a few more concrete suggestions of what might we do, what might it cost, bring them back to you and see if there's a way either to do it in this fiscal year's budget or we consider incorporating it into next year. But and my, I think my, my preference had, would we, be sooner than later. We had talked about yeah. taking it out of the select board um, budget and certainly for the amount that we're talking about I think that it is not unreasonable. I certainly would not want this to wait until next, next year. budget cycle. No, I think that would be a, 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 very, a, a very good next step. Just array them and pick them off as we can with current funding and then when we get to, when mm -hmm. we do get to budget, uh, if there's more things we'll that need to be done. We'll have a good sense of f future, yeah. you know. Yeah. I agree. I think that's... We can, we can move on that. Um, another related item that Josh had raised uh, was, are there ways to increase the ability of folks off-site to participate mm -hmm. in meetings? You know, when you listen to Vermont Public Radio, people call in. It wouldn't be that simple here, but... Are there ways that somebody could email or text and there's a somebody, whoever that is, who's monitoring and we agreed it will take five questions from the outside audience on this topic as a mm -hmm. way to increase the potential for public participation. Apparently yeah. that came up as well in the planning commission. It did. Session. And, and, I, and I just sort of uh, back of the envelope. I mean, if we, if we played someone $15 an hour to do that for six meetings, a month just for those three things that so we're talking um, two or three thousand dollars if that um, and it just seems like again it's <laughs> it's a really important thing to have public input mm -hmm. and anything we can do to improve that is just as important as anything else we do yeah and I so I would like to pursue and I'm happy to take the you know, take the lead. I mean, um, Kate brought up, uh, Kate Lally brought up a uh, a a thing that they do in uh, Winooski. I think it was wasn't it Kate. I mean, the, the last th I was asking Andrew um, that that they're actually they sort of do instant polls of people online. Oh, huh? I mean, people who are watching. Um, you know, they're it, to give us give you a sense, and it seemed fairly simple. Um, so I think there's a lot of things that we can do that aren't terribly difficult that we can really engage the public in. Uh, I'm, I think that's a high priority. Would you be willing to take the lead on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. And work with Lee for... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Yep. Okay. I'm, I may be seeing the Winooski Town Manager tomorrow midday, and if I do, yeah, I'll ask yeah, her what that'd, that that'd process is and how yep. they achieve that. Boy, I was awful strong about the other venues, but the diff, the, the the real difficulty is the the VCAM. The VCAM. Mm -hmm. So it 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 ends up being uh, other venues, perhaps, but short of a of a formal meeting, which which introduces the next one. Whether two of us 
Right, and that, the, the last one, was the, it's smaller community input, and this is something that, that uh, Mary and I had, had, had discussed, I can't remember how it started, is that the idea of having small community groups with um, two select board meetings so it wouldn't be a, a worn meeting. And the way I can see this happening, and Mary, please chime in, um, is to make that opportunity available to any group who would like to schedule a venue um, and um, or at least identify that they would like to have something, um, suggest some dates, and then at, we can ask members of the select board who have been willing to do that. So it's not on, incumbent on us necessarily to identify which groups, but the groups can self identify themselves and say, hey, we're willing to, to do this. Will two of you come and talk with us? And I, you know, yeah, we talked about it in Wake, talked about it yes. in Harrington Village. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. and, and, and then we, we and then, we, and then whoever attended would then report back to the full board as to what sure. the, what yeah. the information uh, received was. But it wouldn't be a regularly scheduled. It wouldn't be a regularly scheduled. But right. it, it would just be something be, that er, it wouldn't be, it, it would be something that anybody could attend. Sure. But we would count on yeah. community groups to do the organizing yeah. of, of the event. No, I'd be quite willing to help with that, Lee. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we It'd talked about, and, and Wake was very receptive mm -hmm. to yes. the idea, I suspect. Harrington might be as well. I don't know whether there's an. Well, I think there's lots of groups that could. I mean, people Rotary, could have, Rotary would probably be very happy yeah. to have. Yeah, I mean, Rotary, Rotary, if, if, if if neighborhoods wanted to have it at someone's house, I think that would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, for neighborhood groups to, to um, to organize something. Yeah, I think that's. I think if the word got out, you might find people coming to you saying, "Yeah, can you please come?" Yeah. Yeah. And I think I don't think it would be difficult. Um, Certainly would be more time, but I'm certainly willing to participate. Reading through, does anybody have anything they thought should be there that's not, or something that we haven't discussed that you think we should, or some ideas? There's plenty. There's no. There's no time limit. I mean, you just let Lee know. Mary. Um, I'm, the only thing I would add is I feel like we actually have accomplished a lot. I love having this list of, um, I would call them topics, <coughs> um, and <coughs> I would like to get it more often, um, and, and just because I think it keeps the plate spinning and also <laughs> provides us with some positive feedback <coughs> for the things that we have completed. <coughs> Yeah, it kind of it kind of makes a tickler file in a sense that yeah. which is more likely a, ma a town manager production, but I think it's useful to keep in front of us. I mean, it gives us some balance and and it's certainly a good idea to anticipate uh, the burden, the meeting burden in the fall. Right. I keep referring I to that. A yeah. Ooh. Somewhere Ooh. In the, ah. the, the town office is somewhere. We mm. almost show what we're working on. Um, and I, I do notice that um, there's a very nice screen when you walk into uh, near the clerk's office that shows when the meetings are and that kind of thing. It wouldn't be a bad idea to put that up there. or Yeah, good idea. Interesting. Good idea. Yeah. I've good got idea. one thing to add to the list, and that is a chair that has such weight on it that when I back into it, it can't <laughs> fall over. <laughs> Let's anchor it in. Since sure. I'm not going to do a third one of those no. <laughs> for the purpose of the yeah. TV audience and yeah. such. But anyway. I mean, one other topic I'd like to touch on, I've mentioned this, is just a check-in on Harbor Place with CHT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was an item that we can, we can really kind of just discuss because there is uh, the question of a resource officer. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. At CVU is ongoing. It is, uh, yes. We didn't, uh, between the two of us, report that, but that's an ongoing discussion. That's another one that we've been kind of following. Mm -hmm. and we'll know when we know. Uh, right, we're waiting on Heinsberg to see what they are able or willing or interested in doing, yeah. because certainly we didn't want to step into their turf. Right. Yeah. Williston's said if Shelburne wants to do it, that's great. 
we'll see what Heinsberg has yeah. to say. If Heinsberg would prefer that we do it, we have great interest in our department, ready and able to la help launch that. Yep. But, but is this something, is this part of our policy or is this a, a school district policy? Well, as I understand it, the school, the board, has directed the staff to implement a school resource officer, to hire, get somebody hired to be in the school during the school year. The potential advantage, of course, there are a lot of reasons why a school might want to do that. If we pursued that, the school's willing to fund 80% of that position. That would still be a person who's available to us, would be on our department, mm -hmm. be available to us the other 20% yeah. of the time during emergencies, et cetera. So, and the, the chief believes there may be a candidate perfectly suited for that, well-trained, ready to go, very interested. Um, so we're doing this dance, hoping the timing still works for everybody's benefit. But the timing is getting very short. Yes, it is. So it may we well know, be that this comes to us. We hope we will know Friday morning. Yeah, that it comes to us in some form. In fact, we may have to do a special meeting to is there a select board approval in, in that? Um, we'd certainly keep you informed. I'm not aware that it would require you No, because it's approval. just a hire. It's an internal It would be a hire, hire in the police department to fill yeah. a position that would, in this case, have a f fairly dedicated And the role. town would have an agreement with CVU, presumably. Correct. So uh, all the costs, I mean, would come out of Shelburne? Eighty percent of it would be covered by the school, the school right, district. But 20% by yeah, the so that, town. So that 20% is would be dedicated to Shelburne itself. I'm, that's what I'm trying yes, to Yes, we, we have to structure that. the contract appropriately yeah. with the school yeah. and the person, but at least during the school year itself, they'd be covering 80% of that person's direct costs. We would have that person the rest of the time. Okay. We'll keep you informed as that okay. progresses. Anything else? Uh, the next item is interim town manager contract update and further extension. Uh, and this, the, uh, the situation is this. In discussing with the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission extension of Lee's contract, and some of you may recall that in his original contract, there were provisions for two one-month extensions, September and October being those months. Uh, and we had a board discussion of uh, requesting immediately uh, an extension for the first of those two months, which would take us to October 1. Uh, in discussion with uh, Charlie Baker, who was their executive director, it turned out that they would be willing to extend his contract through uh, December 31. With the proviso, however, that at a point in time, presumably sometime mid-November on, and depending upon the, the uh, achievement of the search, there may be a point at which we are comfortable with the new person coming and could uh, release Lee. So the commitment is not strictly to December 31, but the extension will not be, will not, will not be, uh, his contract will not be extended beyond December 31 in any case. Uh, this, we feel, uh, is directly in the town's interest. This voids any need to recruit and establish any kind of search for an interim town manager. Uh, this has been, uh, uh, I think, a, a very generous support by the Regional Planning Commission with mutual benefits uh, uh, given uh, our, our municipal role. And uh, I would uh, uh, ask uh, for a motion to the effect of, of, of extending, agreeing to extend his contract to, and, but not beyond December 31, uh, 2018, with no changes in provisions. So moved. Moved by Jamie, seconded by Josh. Any? Applied, and there is there is talk of 
people who have applied for other town manager positions in other New England states who may be directed towards our process as well. So there's been there's been some interest. Mm -hmm. So I mean that the time frame that we're talking about here seems still seems reasonable. Yeah, still looking at the I think it's October maybe sixteenth or so to do those two days of interviewing. That's mm -hmm. still on the calendar. Okay. Yeah, there's no assurance we could, uh, the search could produce a recommendation and the board could, could uh, approve uh, a, a candidate who can't come for two and a half months. Exactly. That's true. So we have no control no. Of, over, over the, the problem. But I think the, I think the problem everybody was facing was pressure in late October with a presumably a November 1 completion on Lee's uh, uh, interim contract and a point of the search committee where there was some some expectation that the process might not be might might not be complete this relieves that pressure certainly and uh, again should there should the process move along with dispatch and by December 10 no, uh, there's someone identified, approved, and and potentially coming before too long. Then we've agreed not only to keep the regional planning commission closely advised, uh, but to re uh, but to release Lee. So, uh, I think this is uh, a solution that's in everybody's interest, and and we're certainly delighted, uh, finally, uh, to say to Lee that we're really happy to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Really happy to have you for the, for the for the additional time. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none. Did those. A, did you vote on that? Not yet. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Would you like to say something? No. Just asking if you voted on it. Uh, uh, no. Uh, no. We're about to. Sorry. Those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 Including Mary and those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We thank you. I know of no Thank other you. business. Uh, just like to correct one matter for the record, it was stated earlier in the meeting that the documents for tonight's meeting were not on the town's website, but in fact they are. Okay. Tom? I hope Tom Hawkins Falls Road. I hope I won't be viewed as being the Grinch, <laughs> but it concerns me that Dr. Parker has missed a number of meetings in whole or in part recently. And so I would ask that she consider resigning her position on the select board. Thank you, Tom. Any other comments? Any other business? Hearing none, no, seeing no hands, the motion to adjourn is appropriate. Motion to adjourn. So moved Second. by Josh, seconded by Jamie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those approving, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Mary, again very much. Those opposed, nay, the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you and welcome thank and hello. And thank you. Thank you, you all for being here. Thank you.